How's it going, Michael? Still holding in? Yes. You guys, this is his first podcast episode, actually. So he was he was a little nervous about it. I think you're doing great, by the way. Thanks. And I hope that um, all the four people listening to this will <laughs> will think that that you're doing great too. No, it's 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 awesome. I I do enjoy recordings with you and um, and. Uh, I hope that you do too. And you yes, stick around for fun. a while. It's fun. So I'm gonna share a story because this is a this is a behind the scenes segment or the first the very first behind the scenes yeah. segment of our of our third season, and uh, we're gonna talk about uh, a car shoot that we did here Howdy. at the photo flight. Yeah, you weren't around yet. No. Ah, oh, too bad. You would have me. loved this. Yeah. Dude, you would have loved this. I this this was awesome. So it's it was an Audi shoot that we got to do um, here at um, Lime Rock, actually. Lime Rock Race Park in Connecticut. Yeah. It's in northwest Connecticut. It's an old, uh, I'm going to say old. It's a Well, it is an old racetrack, yeah, really. Older. But there's a lot of, yeah, it's a, it's a racetrack with a long history of uh, great performances, actually. American Le Mans, they run that there. Mm-hmm. They run a bunch of cups there. It's... It's really cool. Nice New England setting. I know like Forza and a bunch of video games actually have Lime Rock oh, really? on there. So, wow. you know, you guys, if you are into video games and if you have some racing game, and you can just find take a look. Yeah. Yeah. Take a look what Lime Rock looks like. It's a very cool New England setting. So we were uh, picked by uh, this production company and uh, Audi Sport actually to shoot uh, the release um, or the Audi driving experience, Audi Sport driving experience, I think that's the official Mm -hmm. name, with the new Audi, uh, the current Audi RS3 models and uh, the TT RS. So they're the five in line. If you guys are into Audis, the five in line 2012 turbo is back. And if you're if you're a true Audi fan, you'll know what I'm talking about because they're incredible motors. I've I've had one. I still have a car with one. It doesn't drive. (laughs) I drove it to the ground. Incredible motors, but it doesn't drive. Blew the motor. Sadly, it's a 1989 Audi Coupe Quattro, and to me, it was yeah. like a street legal go kart, you know. And I treated it that way, which like wasn't nice, and and it it paid me back by you know sitting in my barn for last bunch of years with you know many looking years. very sadly, yeah, with last many years. But I I do have you know kind of a personal affection for these cars, so you know to me to have an opportunity to fly drones around you know these mm-hmm. cars. Being driven by this, uh, they have this German racing legend, Hans Stuck. He's an, an older gentleman now, but he's a legend. He started in the F1s, actually, and he raced that for a while. And then in the 80s, they actually... So I'm 6'2", right? And yeah. this guy is like 6'3". He has an... And he's yeah. in his like late 60s, 70s, and he's Probably got an shrunk. inch on me, this tall, tall German guy, a really nice guy. We talked for, you know, for quite a while. But then in what happened in the 80s in the F1 racing, they changed the cockpit size, right? Mm-hmm. So we got to uh, we got to hang out with Mario Andretti last year. And Mario Andretti is a short guy. He's like my shoulder, you know, height. Yeah, yeah. Hans Stuck, after that, he couldn't fit into the F1 cockpit. So oh, he man. actually started doing like a DTM racing. And that's how he got into the Audis and, you know, that rally and, and you know, some cup cars. And did really well in it. So these guys had him out there. And the idea was when... They do a shoot like this, the driving experience. Uh, they have a couple days, or in this case, they had a couple days there with just us. Yeah. So they got the Russian arm guys there from uh, Filmotechnic. So if you guys you remember Russian yeah. Russian arm, oh yeah. You guys Russian arm for the ones who don't know is a it's a top mount. It's a crane on the top of a Porsche Porsche yep. Cayenne Turbo, and and it can carry any cinematic camera. There is four guys running it really as you know you have the driver you have the crane operator then you have the gimbal head operator and then focus puller and they're trying to get the shot really so that's how uh, you can google it and check it out it's a really cool car it was the first time that i've seen it you know because it's like it's over a million dollars it's nuts they they brought this one down from detroit actually because that's where the car manufacturers are so it makes sense to have that there i think they have three of these around the country I'm, i'm not exactly sure but it was pretty incredible to like see it in action yeah. and then they brought us and they had a team of people for the uh, to work the cameras inside of the cars and just you know a bunch of ground the terrestrial shots yeah and we you know we took turns literally the beauty of uh, the beauty of so we'll start with the camera right so we brought the inspire back then we had the inspire pros Okay. with the x5 not the x5r so which was you know fine what we were we didn't need to do any like close up down to the ground, fast, low to the ground, fast, uh, you know, chasing shots because they did have the Russian arms. So what we were there for were high up aerials, some establishing shots and um, basically 
anything that the Russian arm wouldn't get, top downs and you know those oh, those kinds yeah. of shots. And sadly, our two days. So what was going to happen? We're going to shoot it for two days. They use that for commercials. They use it for videos. But then they have the the VIP, the invited guests, and the news media. And everybody gets a ride around the track with Hans Stuck. So you know he takes around. They can track. You know they can try the car with him, kind of you know coaching them through it. Mm -hmm. And they shoot a video, and they cut that video with that footage that we got the two days before. The Russian arm guys and the you know the drone guys and the inside guys. So what they end up with the the media guys is they end up with a complete car review that's already cut with them from mm -hmm. you know done with professional yeah. cameras, completely controlled by Audi. So it starts with like them getting in the car with Hans Stuck. They talk a little bit, and then the rest of it is just that real. So if you ever watched wow. like um, yeah car blogs and they have some really cool shot car reviews and mm -hmm. you wonder like wow this is kind of a cool production a lot of car manufacturers they hook them up like that and it's good it's a great way of yeah. doing it that way audi you know like there is one budget actually doing it so they can they can get some good you know quality work they can get that russian arm they can afford to hire for a flight aerial media <laughs> the plug yeah the plug and and everybody gets everybody gets some nice footage instead yeah. of just having an iphone shots or you know it's like the, the smaller cameras that they would bring with you know on their own so that was the that was the experience now the beauty of this was shooting a, so shooting a cars right it's kind of difficult unless you have a chase car to get any longer tracking shot of a car because you at some point you lose the death perception right yeah. so a lot of times when when me and mike are shooting in the two operator it's very easy to lose uh, the you know the death perception and then mike yeah. kind of has to keep an eye on a screen or i have to tell him a little bit faster a little bit slower but to get the longer tracking shot ideally you would be in a chase car so you keep the distance mm -hmm. between the the operator and the drone the same yeah um on unless you're on a racetrack because it's a beauty the lap time at lime rock is about 55 seconds right so we're on one side of the track we would <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> follow the car out as far as we could and then just boogie back over the parking lot just to catch up with them back you know where the kind of where the paddocks are on the yeah. other side of the track so we had pretty much you know arounds 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 of the car going about the same way in it so we could play with it we could we could pick our shots we we could you know afford to you know not have all the shots perfect just to experiment a little bit just because we had you know quite a few mm -hmm. so that that was great i love cars going in a circle as far as the the camera uh motion i just you know sped it up a little bit we used the 15 millimeter lens for the x5 camera okay. which is you know it's still pretty wide i wish i had a we didn't really pick to 25 millimeter until the Inspire 2, mm -hmm. 25 and the 45. But um, I wish I had a 25 now because that's a really cool lens for yep. the car chases. Yeah. And the 45 is just... Brings you up they, close. If I had the Inspire 2 there with the 45, they wouldn't need a Russian arm. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They still would, but you can get some really, really good close. shots in the yeah, two operator really set, up, set up with that. You know, it, it takes a little bit practice in the two mm -hmm. operator because again, you have two guys trying to get the camp, get the shot the really. together well. But yeah. in a way, you know what? I looked at the, the way the uh, Russian arm guys worked and they kind of fish too, think about it because we have two guys, right? Trying to get the shot. They've they have four. four guys. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot more. It's it's harder. It's, it's, it is in a way more difficult for them because you know, they, they do have to work together. And by the way, they're trying to drive a crane around the racetrack to keep up with this car while being on the crane. So I don't know, it's a little crazy. Trying In a way, to crash at the same time. Yeah, I was looking at him. I'm like, you guys have a cool job, but you know, here is why we send robots because we're right here. We're not anywhere near, you know, like anything ours. going fast. Yeah. We don't have to, you know, like we mm -hmm. we don't have to. It's it was great to watch, and we also had an opportunity to shoot them. Um, I'll put a link in the show notes, actually, and on the, the blog post, you guys, if you'd like to check it out. I have a short reel from this whole Audi thing, and we also have a really cool video of the Russian arm working yeah. the Audi. We asked them if we can fly when they, because we took turns, right? So we had some labs, they had some labs, yeah. so everybody, you know, gets some. And we asked them if we can fly, and I put together this really kind of, like, little cool oh, video yeah. about the, the Russian arm there chasing the Audi. and. It's just amazing to see how they do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's to me, I geek out on a technology like that. And that was great. That was awesome. So, yeah, that's it. That's our little behind the scenes. I'm going to put a bunch I of like pictures it. on our blog and uh, we're going to put links to those videos down in a note. So if you guys are watching this on YouTube, 
uh, you can just scroll down to the um, description. Is it description? Yeah, description, and you will find a link to the blog post where you can watch all these. Yeah. Go you take can, a look. Yeah, you can also find the behind the scenes this episode or this segment and all the other behind the scenes segments at dronephotographypodcast.com. Just look for the behind the scenes tab. And if you have any questions about any of this or would like to leave us some comment, you can do it right there on our blog, dronephotographypodcast.com.